Hey guys, it's Brie. I finished The Fractal Prince by Hani Rajniemi and I want to tell you all about it. Um, I recently finished uh, The Quantum Thief by Hani Rajniemi, which is his first book in the trilogy. Um, and it was good. It was really confusing. Um, but I quite liked it. And I'll link my review of it down below if you want to know more about the details. And so I wanted to pick up The Fractal Prince because it's the second book. It follows immediately after this kind of big cliffhanger that happens. If you finished the first book, you know that we left on kind of this big like cliffhanger, right? Um, Jean and Miele are fleeing the Oubliettes. They've got all of the Silverners kind of coming after them. Um, big destructive things have just happened and they are going. They are going, going, gone. Most of Earth has become a desert. And in the desert are what are called wild codes, which are essentially uh, nanites that are kind of roaming around wild and free. And they are destructive towards technology and human beings. The humans have seals, um, which is essentially like and like a firewall kind of deal going on uh, that protect protects them from the nanites which is a problem for Jean and Miele of course because they want to go to earth and they obviously can't use like your traditional channels so they're trying to find a workaround there and then there's the parallel plot which is about uh, a woman named Tawadud. She's estranged from her family because she's kind of got this more intimate relationship with the djinn and the people who have kind of merged with the wild code in a sense. The nanites on Earth also support the maintenance of, of kind of uploaded human beings. There were people who didn't want to be uploaded into the Great Common Task, but who kind of had their bodies, they were, you know, kind of almost like digitized and they no longer were in their bodies and so they are kind of living amongst the wild code. Those people are referred to as jinns. First things first, because you've kind of gotten most of the world building, that kind of primary foundation for the world, in the first book, the second book is significantly less confusing. The way that he sets up his story in this one is very like Thousand and One Arabian Nights. Very cool with all of these nested stories. I really liked the approach um, because it, they're intertwined. They're different stories, but it doesn't feel unnatural to be jumping from one to the other. One of the biggest things that struck me about this book is the very different way that Raj and Yemi is taking the story. Um, so the first story is very much like a, an action story. It's you know, a detective story in space with a lot of action and kind of a thief angle, right? The second story is much more about building this kind of mythology um, around the founders, yes, who are already kind of godlike in the universe, but also with, um, but also with Jean. And I think that's a really cool thing to see. One of the things that I'm not terribly fond of about the story is that it starts to feel like a tour of the universe. Um, so we, we left Mars and it was destroyed and then we jumped to Earth. Um, and the plot on Earth wraps up, which isn't a bad thing, but it, it's very much a now let's go to the next planet. Um, and so rather than having kind of a continuous setting, it keeps changing and it kind of feels a little bit, like I said, like a tour of the galaxy kind of thing. The story to start off with is a little slow, um, especially with Miele and Jean, because for the first part, they're kind of like floating in space, like, gosh, where do we go next? And it gets a little bit slow. That, that really is mostly done with by the first third of the book. By the time that's done, they've moved on. They kind of have a bigger, broader goal. Um, but that first third is a little bit slow. It was interesting this time around to see a lot more of Miele and her backstory and her personality. Um, we get hints of it in uh, the, we get hints of that in The Quantum Thief, but it's not always terribly present. And she plays a much 
bigger role, I think, as far as her past goes. And Rajaniemi takes the opportunity to really explore who she is um, and what her relationships are like. So we learn about things like why she didn't want to be a Gogol in the first book, right? Why she didn't want to have copies of herself. And we learn about a little bit about how she gets wrapped up with Jacqueline. I think overall, I'd probably give this one a four. It was really good. Just some pacing problems, um, you know, a little bit of not necessarily a tone, but kind of a story focus um, issue that I have with it. But other than that, a lot of fun, a lot less overwhelming again uh, than the first book. If you've read The Fractal Prince, let me know what you thought of it. Um, I would love to talk to you about it. If you've read the causal angel don't tell me what happens but <laughs> you are free to tell me what you think um, of the fractal prince kind of in retrospect i would like to kind of hear that difference and then as i go on and i read the third book um that'll be interesting to keep in mind and i really kind of enjoy that anyways i will talk to you guys later i hope you're having a fantastic reading week bye